A very good morning to you all. Can I ask you please to stand and face the south door? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Risen, Lord Jesus, as Mary Magdalene met you in the garden on the morning of your resurrection, so may we meet you today and every day. Speak to us as you spoke to her. Reveal yourself as the living Lord. Renew our hope and kindle our joy and send us to share the good news with others. Bless this garden and may we who have prepared it in be strengthened in faith in your presence and rejoice in the hope of eternal glory. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen Please do sit down. Dear sisters and brothers, it is such a great joy to welcome you here this morning on Easter Day. The day of days, the Sunday of Sundays. The reason it's all here, the reason we exist, the reason we give glory to God on this beautiful day. Christ is risen from the tomb. Death is no more the end of us but life everlasting. 
It's such a good delight to welcome friends and visitors, particularly to welcome members of Sally's family on this birthday that we're not supposed to mention, but everybody knows about. Wonderful to see you and great to have you with us. Today is the reason all of this exists. And so in order that we might worship the risen Christ, in order that we might worship God with all our hearts, we lay down before him our sins. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. We pray together. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honor, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. A reading from Acts. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, 
He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who are chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testi testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. On the first day of the week at early dawn, the women who had accompanied Jesus came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, <coughs> Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered Jesus' words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, 
he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do sit down. <clears throat> we gather on Easter Day. But does it feel like Easter Day? Are you still waiting that moment when it all comes right again? Maybe it won't come this year but Easter will still be Easter. It is a time of tradition, of those things that we do almost without thinking, those things that remind us where we are in the cycle. Being born in a vicarage, Easter has always meant a lot of washing in our house, washing of sacred laundry, washing of the vestments we wear, and the cloths for altars. It meant, as a child, watching an awful lot of putting away and then an awful lot of getting out again. You can see that my childhood has scarred me totally. This morning, at 4.15, I might tell you, I got up to get dressed and go to Edingthorpe to lead their vigil service. It seemed such a good idea in November. This morning, it hurt a bit. But needs must, so I got up and got myself sorted and put on the cufflinks I always wear on Easter Day, or at least always have these past 14 years. They're the cufflinks of my college the College of the Resurrection in Murfield, and so on a black background is the symbol of the victorious Christ, the Lamb with his flag. And as I drank my coffee and regained consciousness this morning, I wondered about the past 14 Easters, the ones without worry or trouble at college, the ones that felt high octane and nerve wracking when I was a curate, the six or seven in my last parish, including that COVID one that didn't feel like anything at all. And here we already are at the third Easter of my time here. All these things, and you will all have them, go towards making up the story, the things we wear on particular days. And this morning we came into church to be reminded by all the usual but wonderful symbols. The church again filled with beautiful flowers for which we offer our heartfelt thanks to God, both for those who have arranged them and those who provided them. The church again full of brass and gold and shiny things, telling us that all is well. The choir released from the miserable Lenten dirges to sing Easter music the trumpets of the organ loosed at last. But is it really Easter? Does it feel different? I suspect for all of us in so many ways, no, of course not. The things that worried us yesterday worry us just the same today. The people on our hearts and in our minds who are unwell or afraid or sad, we think of them too just the same today. And yet, something is different. The light creeps in to the darkness that seemed so unending. The magic of the clocks changing means something of an early morning, but lighter evenings and the hope of spring and summer to come. But is it really Easter? 
Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women who are not named, went to tell the disciples that it was really Easter, that Jesus really had kept his promises, that he really was risen from the dead, that this story, all of it, was true. And the disciples' response, just like us, is it really Easter? And Peter goes to check and irony of ironies whizzing me back to my childhood, it's the linen cloths, the washing, that tells him that Jesus has risen. And then that glorious gospel understatement, he went home amazed at what had happened. Well, of course he did. For human beings are never, it seems to me, more surprised than when someone of grace and integrity is seen to keep their promises. We are so used to being let down, so used to lying, so used to failure, that this Jesus and his promises and his truth are almost too much to bear. And is it really Easter? Well, yes, my friends, it is. But the rubbish is still rubbish, but even then is transfigured, is changed, is enlightened by this light from the tomb. And the good is still good and even better because of the light from the tomb. And this place resounds as it has in so many Easter's down these 900 odd years with the glory of heaven. Above all else, Jesus kept his promises. He told his disciples that it would all be okay. It might still be painful, it might still be difficult, it might still be awkward, but it will in the end all be okay. All of us this past year, and indeed in our community in recent weeks, have had loss and pain to contend with. But we do it all. We do it all in the light of that candle, that single candle burning in the darkness of the world that reminds us that the stone is gone, the linen cloths are not needed, for he is risen. He has kept his promise, and not kept his promise in some random, and peculiar way we cannot fathom, not kept his promise to the world, but kept his promise to you and me, each and all of us, every human being there ever has been and ever will be. Jesus came to call us all home, to promise us all that Alleluia would be the song in the end though we might be miserable on the way, though it might be a bumpy road, Alleluia will be our cry in the end. Vicar, tell me, why do you bother with it all? Well, really, I just came in for a coffee, but if you want me to tell you, I'll tell you. I bother with it all and I hope you bother with it all for this reason. That because of Jesus the Christ, in the end, love wins. Because of Jesus and his promises, love wins. Because of Jesus and his hopes for us, his hopes that we might be lifted up, that we might be more like him, love wins. We do this all of it, not because we live in some perfect existence where everything is well, but precisely because we do not. If we knew it would all be okay, we would not need Easter Day. If life eternal had been promised from the beginning, Jesus would not have come. But into the darkness of our world, Jesus did come. And the empty tomb shows us that it will in the end be okay. And one day we shall all of us 
united with all whom we have loved and lost. We shall laugh and sing and praise God and sing Alleluia forever. Easter Day does not make it all better, but shines a light into the world, a light that this world needs of hope and encouragement, a light that we need, that God's promises for us, us, are true. Today, we shall go out from here, we shall gorge ourselves on chocolate, well, that's just me probably. We might fall asleep after dinner, that's definitely me. But all of it, all of it will be in a different world, for Christ is risen. All of it will be with a different hope, for Christ is risen. And you, my friends, are charged by God with the real task to go from here and be an Easter people, to go from here and make Alleluia your song, not so that you can be one of those nauseating Christians who pretends the world is perfect already, but so that you can be a beautiful Christian who makes the broken world better because you know that love wins. My dear friends, Christ came for us, kept his promises for us, lives for us, that we might live for him. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Would you stand? In baptism, God called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? I reject them. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbor? I repent of them. Do you turn to Christ as Savior? I turn to Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit to Christ. Do you come to Christ, the way, the truth, and the life? I come to Christ. May God, who has given you the desire to follow Christ, give you the strength to continue in the way. My brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess the faith of the church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, that you may be rooted and grounded in love, and bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Now we kneel or sit as Nancy comes to lead us in our prayers. Christ, our servant King, 
Your resurrection fills us with new life, hope, and expectation. So today we join our brothers and sisters in churches around the world, celebrating our common faith through different languages, race, and nationalities, our joy making us one. May the Holy Spirit guide us all and strengthen us in mission and service, helping us separately and together to grow in our love for you and for each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, as Mary Magdalene met you in the garden, so may we meet you today and every day. As you spoke to her, speak to us, renew our hope and rekindle our joy. Help us to turn from the secular world and focus instead on our love for you and our duty to actively share that love with others. Make light to shine in our hearts and minds, banishing all darkness, so that you can use us to share the good news with others. Lead us into the truth and set us aflame with the fire of your love and the confidence of your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Caring Lord, we pray for the leaders of all nations that they may give priority to those with the greatest need in the distribution of basic resources. We look for peace in this Easter season, especially in those places that are shadowed by war and conflict. We give thanks for all the aid agencies, the individuals working tirelessly to ease suffering and loss. Support those giving so much and not counting the cost to their own lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our friends and families that they can enjoy a time of rejuvenation. We give thanks for the great celebrations and significant birthdays we share with each other. We pray especially for our church community, for the ministry team, and all who help in the day-to-day -day running of services and mission, for our warden Chris, and those who carry out tasks in caring for the fabric and physical presence of our church. We give thanks for those who have touched our lives and given so much, remembering especially Roger, who served here so long, never ever counting the cost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who need hope and healing in their lives, remembering especially Valerie and John, and all those others who have entered our church asking for healing and comfort. We pray for those who mourn, that they find the strength to face a different future. And as we go out into the world as Easter people, may we truly reflect your love in our families, our church, our communities, so that the world can witness that we are followers of Jesus, drawing others into his loving care. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're just going to go off script for a moment or two. Um, it's a particular joy um, and opportunity for me to say thank you to our musicians and our choir for their work, not just this past week and today, but all year. And today we're going to admit Abron um, as head chorister. So, Tim, can I ask... And also, I'm told, the dark, sounds terrifying, the dark blue level, <laughs> imagine, of the Royal School of Church Music Voices for Life and Head Chorister. That's many medals, goodness me. Right, here we go. Father, I present to you Abron Sam to be admitted as Head Chorister of this musical foundation of St. Nicholas. Abron, do you wish to be admitted to this office? Will you try always to set a proper example in singing and in conduct, to lead others with gentleness and moderation, and constantly seek to stir up the gifts God has given you? Thank you. 
Members of the choir, will you support and encourage Abram in the commitment that he has made today as head chorister? We will. Abram, I admit to you as head chorister, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, these nice people are going to congratulate you. Well done. Thank you. You can ask him later about the mysteries of the dark blue level. <laughs> Would you stand? <laughs> the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. My dear sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. We offer each other a sign of God's peace.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, 
we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of our Blessed Lady Mary, Mother of our Lord and God, Nicholas, Mary Magdalene, Botolf, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As one family united in the light of the resurrection, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. There are two stations for communion this morning at the High Altar and at the Lady Chapel uh, to my left. Please do follow the directions of the stewards. If you would like to receive communion and it's your custom, please do so here. If you wish to receive a gluten-free wafer, please come to the High Altar and let me know uh, that that's what you would like. If you would prefer to receive a blessing and not Holy Communion, please carry the service order in your hand uh, and keep your head bowed and I'll know that that's what you would like. As we come, all of us together, God's family in this place, please do come to the altar, to the place of God's coming among us, as we give thanks for the gift of the resurrection. For Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice, 
Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Before our final hymn, can I wish you all on behalf of everybody here the happiest of Easter's. Can I thank our choir again, our musicians, our servers, our flower arrangers, our book handers out, our linen washers, our tea makers, um, the people who've cleaned the church, those who've arranged rotors and everything else uh, for the celebration of a beautiful Holy Week and Easter. Thank you for all that you do. And although it may not be noted by many, it is noted by God. So thank you for everything you bring to this community. Can I encourage all of you most warmly to come to Roger's funeral on Friday at 11 o'clock here, as in the light of the resurrection, we give thanks for the love that binds us with him together forever. Can I also invite you to remain after the service for the enormous quantity of refreshments. Uh, there is tea, there is coffee, there is wine, there is cake. There is a shed load of Easter egg to eat uh, as we give thanks to God, not just for the resurrection, but for the fact that Sally's birthday has coincided with the resurrection. It won't do so again until 2087, <laughs> at which point she may be worshiping on another shore and in a greater light. So let's make the very, very most of it. Please do stay uh, and enjoy fellowship as an Easter people. We make Alleluia our song in every moment of our lives. So we stand to sing, Thine be the glory. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. 
Amen. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all you love and pray for this Easter day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.